I'm Nate Lind, and I help people interested in buying or selling online businesses get the transaction done without the deal falling apart. If you're looking to buy or sell online businesses, then be sure to keep tuning in for more videos like this one. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications about new videos and interviews. And introduce yourself in the comments. Are you a buyer or a seller? Enjoy the interview. I've got Shaquille Prosla here. Shaquille's been very active in the M&A space, both acquiring businesses, also has had some exits as well. And uh, looking forward to learning a little bit more about you, Shaquille. Can you tell us, how did you get to this point? Share a little bit of your background, catch us up, and then uh, let's get into a war story because I know you've got them. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, interesting how I, how I started. Um, I don't think anyone just dives in and starts just buying businesses, right? So for me in 2013, I actually started my first business, uh, e-commerce. Um, and, you know, in 2013, when I did start the business, I had to learn everything by myself. Uh, SEO, marketing, you know, even paid ads. How do you make a website? What platform to use? What products to even import? Uh, custom fees, like there's a whole list of things you have to learn about selling things online. And, and at that time, I didn't take any courses. All I was doing was looking at Google um, and looking at competitors. Uh, I like to copy my competitors. I like to be a follower. And so that, that's what I was doing in 2013. Um, but it took a very long time to even make it profitable. Uh, it was very stressful. But I learned a lot along the way about you know, making a website. So in 2014, I decided to buy my first website and I decided to buy it because I wanted to skip that whole process of what I just went through. I wanted to buy a business in a box where a seller has gone through the whole process of failing uh, what's worked uh, and take those strategies and improve on it. And so that's when I bought my first website. Um, they were just selling on their website. It was a crappy web, you know, web page and I improved it. I made my money back in three or four months very quickly. It was a great start to the journey. And, um, you know, today I have acquired now, um, I think 15 e-commerce companies, uh, ranging from the six figure to seven figures. Uh, the latest acquisition was, was mid, mid seven figures. And, uh, yeah, that's where I am. We, we have a team of over, I think 80 people now working for us. Uh, all the websites are on different product lines. It's just, uh, I like buying things that are profitable and evergreen. Yeah, that's uh, you, you hit on a couple of subjects that I hear over and over again, you know, buying a company instead of trying to build it because of that, that fast track you get of skipping over all of the, um, you know, the product research, um, you know, the initial sales process, you know, finding a winner, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it's very, very common to hear that from buyers that are looking at our listings all the time. Um, so I, I, I totally get that. What, what are some of the first things that you're looking at when you're checking out a, uh, business that's for sale? What's, what's most important to you? What's, what's like, you know, in the world of e-commerce, I kind of think of this analogy where, you know, we've got, when we're selling a product, we've got, you know, some copywriting, uh, you know, we've got, you know, product, uh, you know, description pic or, uh, pictures of the product, that sort of stuff. What's the equivalent of that for you? Like the first thing you look at when you're looking at buying a business. Yeah. And, and that question is interesting because it's different for everyone. It's based off their skill set. For me, uh, I want to buy a business that's making at least $200,000 in net profit a year. Uh, you know, and it has to be around for at least three years. Um, and about half the traffic, I want it to be organic. And those three reasons, it, it's, and I have my own reasons, but, you know, I, I want it to be profitable. Uh, because I could hire a manager to run the company. Uh, I wanted to be at least three years old because it shows a predictable revenue. Um, it, it shows that it's sort of survived that initial uh, startup phase. Uh, and then the third one, organic traffic. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of my strong skill set. Um, if someone else were to look to buy a business, I would tell them, look at your skill set. What are you good at first? Um, and look for those opportunities. You know, I, I always see people that are good developers. Uh, look for a website that has a shitty website. If you're a good designer, uh, look for a website that has a low CRO. Uh, if you're good at Facebook ads, if 
find a company that's not using Facebook ads. Or if you're really good at Amazon, find a company that's not even selling on Amazon. You want to take your skill set and you want to improve what the business is lacking on. That's a really good point. I get a lot of uh, buyers that come, they're looking at, uh, at various listings and some people, part of my inner circle say, you know, Nate, I want a deal. Like, you know, what's in your opinion, Nate, what's the, what's the best, you know, uh, company that's listed. And it's really tough for me to, to be able to answer that because I, I don't know what someone's skill set is. And so frequently I've, I have to kind of turn the questions around and see, well, what do you have an unfair advantage in? That, that for me is always a big thing is if you've got an unfair advantage with some skill set, how how can you apply that to something? And then um, I like to see people take uh, a, a, a single, a, a singular or one dimensional business or even a two dimensional business in terms of its, uh, its marketing uh, channels, its incoming marketing channels, and then add another marketing channel to it. And I mm -hmm. so, it's so rare for, for me to see uh, a business that is, is multi-dimensional. Usually they're Amazon only or direct to site only or um, you know maybe re you know retail only like those those sorts mm -hmm. of channels people get very uh, very one dimensional with it and that's the one of the first places I, I would recommend any buyer to look at uh, you know exploring like get into email marketing you know if you if you have a, a list of email uh, you know customers retarget them um, mm -hmm. What are some of the first things that you do with your with your skill set around SEO? Uh, we talked a little bit about this uh, in conversation, pr you know, previous to this. But when you buy something, you want to get max, you know, ROI as quickly as you can, right? And and get your money back out of the deal. That's that's the investor mentality, correct? Yeah. So I look at it two ways. Uh, that is one of them. Is how do I get my money back as quickly as possible? So. For the first 30 or 60 days, I keep the original seller on, um, you know, on a consulting basis, try to transfer as much knowledge as I can. Um, after that 30 days, I look for quick wins. So what are some low hanging fruits that I could just quickly implement right away? Uh, can I turn on, you know, Facebook ads? Can I reduce Google ads? Um, can I you know, let go of someone and, and, and replace with a, you know, more efficient outsourced person. I mean, it, it, these are just things I'm looking for uh, quickly. You know, one of our latest acquisitions, um, when we bought the company, we realized their cogs are super high and we moved suppliers and we're able to re reduce that by 30%. It's just looking at ways that you could quickly win. And that's what I look at, you know, for the first three months is, okay, Let's transfer the knowledge from the seller. Um, and what can I do to make a little bit more money, whether it's growth or reducing uh, expenses? Um, after that three months, I sort of switch what my strategy is. Um, in the back of my mind, I want to get an ROI on my money. If I'm putting $100,000 down, I want to make that money back quickly. Uh, but for me, because I manage so many companies, it's came to a point where I want to get an ROI on my hourly basis, right? It, it, you know, I want to spend, you know, let's just say four hours a week on this business and make $2,000 an hour. So that's kind of my uh, goal now is to make that hourly rate even higher. Tell us about a time that you bought a business and, or, or going through the process of buying a business and things went sideways. Like, tell us a little bit about that and, and how did uh, either, whether, whether it was a successful transaction or even not, there's learning lessons on either one. Share one and you know, obviously keep you know, confidential, whatever you'd like to. Uh, we're just curious about the, the hair on the deal, like what happened and how did you get through it? Yeah, Nate, that's a, there's been a few. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> I think everyone's got them, right? Yeah, yeah. There's definitely been a few, and uh, it. I, I think part of it ends up happening because uh, you have a business and you're opening up this book of business, all your secrets. I, I think you, you know sellers are going to be you know nervous about opening this up, so you have to build that trust. And if you're not able to build that trust, things could go sideways. Um, you know, that, that's happened to, you know, a, a me a few times where um, I, I wanted access to, I'm already in due diligence and I wanted access uh, to their website, you know, Shopify login. This is a very normal thing uh, to get access to. And uh, the seller wasn't, wasn't giving it. 
Um, and, and he said, you know, let's get your financing in order. Uh, let's get your, you know, why don't you look at the financials? If everything looks good, I'll give you access to Shopify. Towards the end of it, he still did not give me access to Shopify. Um, and, and, and no, you know, and I tried to build a rapport with them. Uh, you know, it, it, it was very, very difficult. You know, needless to say, you know, the, and the broker was super helpful too, but with, needless to say, he was not giving me access to Shopify. Even though I offered money in escrow, everything, that deal, that deal kind of screwed up. Um, because if, if I'm not able to verify things like that, it's not going to work out. Let's, un- let's unpack yeah. that for a second because that's really important. What, what are some of the basic things you're expecting to see in due diligence? Yeah, I, I, I usually like to break it down to four things. It's, it's financials, um, it's marketing, it's operations, and it's growth, really. So uh, financials is the biggest thing. You are usually valuing at a multiple of that net profit or seller's discretionary earnings. So I want to make sure that the financials are, are what they are when I submitted the LOI, the letter of intent. So I'll ask for tax returns. I will ask for access to Amazon or Shopify, um, bank statements for the last 12 months, credit card statements, authorized.net. Uh, and what I do is I take all this information and I uh, play a detective. I, uh, uh, redo the financials and rebuild it. It takes a lot of time, but this is how you can verify to make sure that the, the financials are, are correct. I don't think sellers do it intentionally, but sometimes things do get missed. Uh, and, and that's where you're able to find kind of, okay, well, you know, you didn't include this expense, but I will incur it. I think the valuation should be this. Um, so the, as far as financials go, I, I, act, I ask for all of those. As far as access goes, um, yes, I would like access to the backend system mainly. That's the main thing. Um, Facebook, you know, uh, I'd like access to your Facebook campaigns um, are another thing as well. Uh, Google Analytics, Google Ads uh, are definitely a few things I would ask for access to as well. So you're going to want to look in Seller Central if they're on Amazon. You want to get into Shopify if they're on that or whatever their shopping cart or CRM is. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you're looking for the reporting and analytics of the sales, matching those then, you know, with the financials to see. It, oftentimes, I see this a lot, people, you know, uh, how people handle refunds sometimes isn't, uh, isn't done properly. So they, they're taking a net number instead of a gross number. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it'll still wash out in the end, but you know, having that detail is important because you need to understand the, uh, the refund rate. Um, yep. You mentioned for- refund. Uh, I remember this one deal, they pre-sold a lot of uh, gift cards. And so, you know, the seller got all the revenue and when I didn't realize this, but when, you know, time came, when I took over a lot of customers, you were using gift cards. I wasn't getting revenue for any of that. And that was never part of the contracts either. So <laughs> these are things unplanned for, but you know, these are things now I'll watch out for. Yeah. Good point. Cause you, you've, you're just having to fulfill and you know, those orders and not get any money for it. So that's yep. right out of your pocket. Yep. Uh, so you also mentioned authorized.net, um, you know, for an aspiring buyer who's not familiar with payment systems, that's a payment gateway. Um, NMI authorized.net very, very, very common one. So it's important to uh, log into those and, and that that's, you know, a, an auditable system. It's a system of record for the payments as well. Uh, a really good system to take a look at, um, you know, the transaction and batching of money. Mm-hmm. Is there anything, so when, when you're looking at marketing, so you're looking at uh, Facebook ads, uh, Google display network, um, Amazon PPC, like that sort of stuff. Um, are you looking for email lists? Uh, are you, are you checking, um, like the bounce rates on emails or the validity of email customers and that kind of stuff too? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll look at, uh, the email campaigns. I'll do a quick audit. My thing is I just look at the metrics, you know, if their open rate is 10% and the usual market supposed to be 15%, well, you know, let, let's look at what they're sending out campaigns for. Is it even relevant to, uh, you know, the audience, you know, if the open rate is low, that's just an opportunity for me. If they're using, let's just say constant contact as their email provider, that's a way to, 
you know, migrate to Clavio or something for, for even more additional revenue. So yeah, I look for those opportunities, but I look more at the metrics to see, okay, well, you know, they're doing a terrible job. Uh, I can improve on that. Facebook ads, their ROAS is uh, low. You know, on, on Amazon, their ACOS is high. You know, so, you know, how do we improve on that? Uh, so I'll look at the metrics really and, and then determine a plan going forward on how I can improve those. And when you're looking at operations, uh, what, what's important for you there? Yep. That's a very important question because I, I see, uh, you know, businesses, the, 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 the transferability ends up going terrible for the seller if uh, they're not taking all that knowledge from the seller. Uh, a lot of times, and the businesses I like to buy are small businesses. They're ran by you know a seller that's working full time and with a few employees. Um, and, and so operationally, I want to make sure everything can be transferred. And so uh, I like to really dig into what the the seller is doing on a day to day basis um, and and hourly basis too, uh, and, and what changes seasonally for them. So. You know, lifting the hood on the operations is a, is a big thing for me um, because if I cannot replicate what they're doing or do a better job, uh, the business is going to decline. And so that's, that's, that's an important thing. I'll give you a good example. I bought this dropship company a couple of years back and the seller uh, was manually uh, looking at competitors' pricings to see what people were, were doing. And then he would change his pricing that kind of knowledge was never told to me. And so three months later, you know, our, our, my sales are, are, are declining a little bit. And I asked the seller, like, hey, can you please help me out? Like, we're, we're struggling here. And he gave me an additional three or four things that he was doing. Um, and I realized that, you know, that's something I'm not even doing. That's very tedious work, but I'm going to have to do this now. So it's always asking those questions what are you doing today? What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing on an hourly basis? What, you know, what changes seasonally? Um, and just dig into it. Always ask more questions than that's needed. Do you use the SBA, uh, you know, 7A program or have you used that for acquiring any businesses? Yeah, I have. I've used it on a few occasions and I'm maxed out now at that uh, $5 million limit, which I think it's been increased to $10 million. But yes, I am very familiar with it, and I think it's a great uh, vehicle to purchase businesses. What what advice would you have for other buyers who are going to you know step into that uh, that space? Any lessons that you learned going through that process? Yeah, um, it, it does take a little longer time uh, than usual. Um, in my experience, it's taken at least three months to close. So be patient. And that's where building that rapport and the trust with the, the seller is very important uh, because at times you're not doing anything. Your due diligence is over and you're waiting for financing. So uh, be patient, build, learn a relationship with the seller. Um, you know, as, as far as kind of how much financing you're going to get, you want to make sure uh, that the seller at least has two or three years of tax returns um, that are audible and that I, that has that have you know their their net income is at least close to a seller's discretionary earnings or can get to that number um we went through a deal where you know the on the uh prospectus it showed four hundred thousand dollars in net profit we got into do a due diligence and when we got their tax returns it showed forty thousand dollars and that's fine you know sellers will you know write stuff off cell phone cars and stuff but nothing was adding back to that four hundred thousand dollars so when we got an appraisal done on the business by the SBA, um, it was based off, you know, I think it was like $150,000 $150, net income. So my financing was way lower than my purchase price. So you want to make sure beforehand that just ask, you know, is the seller's discretionary earnings as close as it is to the net profit or can the ad backs be justifiable? Um, I, I think you guys use, you know, Steven Spear too, the, the SBA guy. He could, you know, I think pre-qualify businesses too. And that, that helps uh, with the SBA process. But be patient. Um, make sure you ask that question on the tax returns. But I think it is the single best vehicle to buy businesses. 
they go for a prime plus 2.75%. In today's market, I think it's like around 6% over 10 years. Most online businesses, you're getting it at a 3x multiple. So you're borrowing at 6% and you're making 33% ROI. That spread right there is your cash flow. So, you know, it's, it's a great uh, uh, business to buy. I mean, a vehicle to buy businesses. I think businesses, unfortunately, some are going to go you know, bankrupt. Some are going to suffer. This is the time to swoop in and buy these businesses. If you've been on the sidelines uh, thinking about buying a business, go buy something in the next few months. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't uh, say it better myself. Uh, Shaquille, anything that's top of mind that's important to you that you want to share with uh, other potential buyers and sellers that uh, is relevant to this conversation? Yeah, I, I think um, to my last point about, you know, go, go buy something. Um, I've seen people get excited about the multiples on online businesses. They think it's super cheap, you know, you know anywhere from a three to four X. That means a 25 to 33% ROI. So I think those are, uh, you know, very mouthwatering numbers, but you have to be careful. You cannot just buy any business. Um, I've seen people fail because they buy for the wrong reasons. You have to focus on a business that fits, you know, your skill sets, your passion, um, your lifestyle. If you go against that, uh, you will lose interest in the business. Uh, and if you, screw up the first business, you cannot build upon that. Uh, there's no way if I, if my sixth or seventh business were to screw up, I wouldn't be able to keep expanding. You have to be careful. You have to be buying something that's, you know, within, uh, you know, your, your sort of preferences. Uh, so be patient as the deal comes. I always tell people you're looking to buy a business. Don't even buy the first one. Don't even buy the second one. Uh, use it as education to where you're just learning upon the business. Look at the prospectus, kind of uh, lift the hood on the business, see you know what's going on. You develop, you start developing questions like, wait, I saw that in the last business, they weren't doing that. I wonder why they're doing it here. Uh, so use that as a learning tool, but be patient is the main thing. Don't rush into buying a business, but definitely buy something this year uh, or, or in the near future. It's the best time to be buying something. And if you're going to buy something, buy from website closers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I bought from you guys. You guys are amazing folks. Yeah, that's part. I mean, part of the thing that I see is the broker's responsibility is making sure that we're, uh, we're taking care of all parties. So um, avoiding some of those obstacles that you, you mentioned, making sure that if it's an SBA deal, that sellers got their tax returns and stuff uh, all ironed out, that it matches their, uh, their SDE on their P and L and that sort of thing. That's, that's part of our jobs too. So we can, we can definitely help facilitate that process. So Shaquille, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate the time that you've given us. And um, for those of you that are watching, we've got more great things coming up. Stick around. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and tell me what you thought about it in the comments. Your comments encourage me to continue posting videos and they give me ideas about what to post next. I read and reply to every single one. Also, if you own an online business and you're curious of how much it's worth, click the link below to get a free business valuation with a member of our team. Who knows? It may even be me you're talking to.